What's up, everybody? Cedric and CJ here, CR Wrestling Commentary. We'll be reviewing Friday Night SmackDown. Now, look, I know I missed the SmackDown. I didn't even know I missed it. I've, just, I've been so out of it, I had no idea it even came by. I just thought, well, SummerSlam, they're, they're not going to, you know, try to cannibalize that. And, and I, I didn't even know. And, well, you'll know as I read this. And we got a lot of... Uh, comments to go over might get a good lengthy one out of it too hope so um so in this uh and for those that are new to this smackdown ish is i just go over the things that is interesting to me i don't review the whole show and i don't really watch the whole show so smackdown ish uh so cody comes out to a roaring ovation he has thoughts on who he wants to defend his belt uh, at uh, the upcoming event bash at Berlin so he wants to challenge somebody and I'm like you're the champion you don't look for challenges that's like letting the, letting everybody know the company hasn't built anyone up to be a challenger and they haven't and he's not in the caliber to be like Minoru mm -mm. uh uh like more, uh, Suzuki Minoru is more like Fit Finley. I just, I just love to fight. I just came after you because it was you. You could have been anybody. I'm going to fight you. It was your time. Yeah. And so Bloodline, they come out and Jacob is not with them and Solo demands a rematch since Roman cost him the match. Cody blasts him for Jacob's injury, uh, caused Roman to go on a warpath and Solo could not do any of that match on his own. So he buried so Solo Sokoa. See, it just did it again. 10.29 p.m. Everything just cut out. Did you hear it? Mm-hmm. Okay, because I was like, what, what happened to my screen? Is everything dying? You know, okay. So, okay. Um, Solo had nothing to say. And so, the take to the ring, Kevin Owen, Ke Kevin Owens come in. He got a couple of chairs. Bloodline back off. And Solo says he'll deal with Cody after he finds Roman Reigns. And Cody says that he'll be waiting on him. And so Cody cuts his music and calls Owens back into the ring. Cody wants to battle Kevin Owens. And he's rejected. He's like, I knew he was going to reject me and whatnot. And then Kevin says that the shot for a belt should be earned. And with his win-loss record, he doesn't deserve it. Cody talks up. The fans want to see it. And Kevin has been there for way too long having his back to not get a shot. And I was like, man, protecting the champion don't mean you get a shot. I mean, you know, you're the champion. You kind of want to not lose the belt. You know, and Owens is your friend, and that's how you make enemies. You know, you, you'd have to have a straight-up, honest, legit wrestling match, and the only way y'all can't be enemies is if someone run in and attack spoils it and the match is thrown out and now they both mad and then they continue the thing like that. that that's the only way you can do that but Cody will not let him retain a title shot rejection so I had to note I think Randy will be jealous and attack Cody seems reasonable with someone who is mentally inept by his own admission and well as well as self-proclaimed backstabber and someone who has declared numerous times that he will injure, hurt, and maim anyone to get what he wants. That's Randy. I had to know that my issue is that people forget this stuff when they switch from booze to cheers. Why is that? It's got the family guy effect. It's his own universe. Mm -hmm. Cause they doing that with Kamala Harris. They don't forgot who she is and what she's done and what she supported. It's like, she's against Trump. Yay. That's all that matters. I, and I agree. I agree. But it's still creating a situation where you don't get anything from this person being president other than we won, we won. And, and that's all y'all get. But y'all lose. So I think I what it boils down to, and I won't go further into this, it's not about what you get from them winning. Is what you don't get from them winning in this case. Okay, I can go with that. 
Since Jacob is injured, the number one contendership for the tag team titles are up for grabs with DIY and versus Pretty Deadly at some point. <laughs> DIY, I get it, but Pretty Deadly, when it was the Street Profits that hung in there the longest in the gauntlet, it doesn't make sense. Why? It shouldn't be a mini tournament or nothing. It's just, you know, the, the top two and then that's it. Simply put the Street Profits uh, put the Street Profits in there with DIY, high on the card, and let them have 12 to 15 minutes. They would have DIY win because they 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 have to. Mm. And so, Street Profits versus A-Town Down Under. It was a squash match, but a good one. Montez Ford got tagged in, and I truly love the camera shot. Everything he did was from one camera shot that traveled from one edge of the apron to the other. It went from one side, it just stuck to 50% of the ring. And I thought that was awesome. Um, the Street Profits hit the Doomsday Blockbuster, got the win. All right. I skipped a lot. I was not going to watch that whole match. Uh, backstage, Cody and Nick, all this talk about the WWE title. And Owens comes in and he's fired up with logical rhetoric. He cries over... <laughs> He cites over getting a rematch due to the uh, rematch clause never being enforced. So he never got one. They never enforce it. He's mad. He's crying over it because that's, you got to say he's crying because if someone complains, they're crying. You know, that's just the way people are. Uh, he cites that Roman, and I wrote cites, but I, wrote, I said cries, so I'm just going to roll with it. I just Donald Trump the hell out of it. He cites Roman. Aha, you get it. Mm -hmm. He cites Roman getting a title shot simply because he's Roman Reigns is stupid. So then Nick lets him know shortly that it's Kevin or Roman. And since Kevin makes good points, Owens will face Rhodes at Bash at Berlin. And Kevin Owens pretty much talked himself into this match. But he did it so logically. D did he say no in the ring? Yeah, it's like I don't want this. And so he goes to the back, and they pretty much did reverse psychology. Oh, uh, because okay, Nick told him if it ain't gonna be you, it's gonna be Roman. What? Why him? And he went into a diatribe of things that I was like, mm, he got a good point there. Mm -hmm. So now we get Jade Cargill versus Alba Fire. All right, it was a scratch. Uh, it was a squash match that went the way it should. Jade in this match showed higher accuracy, better timing, and control over her opponent as to not injure her. There was a failed jumping after the match and Naomi ran in. And I, I had to write this because Naomi, she's sporting the fro. I was like, I think she's trying to get fired or push lower on the card. I'm just saying, this, this company is not known to do certain things. The only ones that can have big natural hair are big Samoans. Yes. And they never got really high on the card. Oh, they talked about uh, the Samoan SWAT team, the Islanders, you know, uh, or, or what not team they would, they, they would be called in WWE. I can't remember. But they weren't high on the card. They'd be opening or lower mid card. They never talked about that. Um, Ellen Knight, he comes out, cut a great retro style promo and look good doing it escobar comes out and pulled a kurt angle style promo with a with a verbiage twist at the end so instead of l a night yeah it's escobar c and i was like cringe yeah maximum cringe so okay i'm like i'm done with you bro so knight says a title shot has to be earned and since he's only beaten uh it says Knight has only beaten Escobar multiple times he has no problem doing it again but before that the real challenger will come out and Andrade he his entrance he comes out like a damn boss it's the it's the, the white smoke at the bottom but he rises out of it not like on the platform but you can tell he was kneeling mm -hmm. it, I was like he looked good and my thought was, ain't y'all on the same team? I was like, oh, that's right. They turned on him or something like that. I was like, oh, you know. <laughs> I guess WWE, everyone gets turned on so much, does it really matter anymore? Uh -huh. So Escobar did something, and 
Escobar pinned Andrade, and the cat missed the SmackDown where Bloodline won the tag, uh, won, won the tag titles, and then SummerSlam, Jacob got hurt, and the titles are now up for grabs. And I wrote, I wish they said that at the opening. Pretty deadly lost to DIY as easily expected. Okay, so Bloodline business. So Tommy informs Solo that they've looked for Roman all night and he's not in the building. Solo is confident that Roman will arrive. I cannot distrust him. I'm going to tell you why. Because the commentary team, Michael Cole Jr. and the other guy, promised us that Roman would be on SmackDown this night. They showed him the graphic. Roman will be here. The crowd was popping for it. You know? So I, I, I like, you know, it kills part of the story when you tell people ahead of time what will happen and then have the storytellers act as if that didn't happen. Think about it. New action movie in theaters. 20 minutes after the movie begins, some advertiser shows up in green screen that says, after the villain survives the fall and lava, concessions will be half off and the re and, and until the replay begins. And you'd be like, the fuck? Well, okay, there's a fall and there's lava, but he survives. Do I care for this? Or, or am I so intrigued at the movie so far? I got, it's, don't don't tell us that Roman's going to be there. And then Owen's got to act like, I don't know. And then Solo got like, he will be, I'm sure. It's like, yeah, you, know, you damn sure. They already advertised it. It's, it's good, bruh. So G.O.D. Grizzly of Destiny holds firmly to the tag titles in the ring. And it bothers me that Lower doesn't look so confident. It's just, it's not on his face. He looks worried. I guess the mini tournament they had was to challenge the bloodline. They didn't explain things as well. And I had to know, if this was Fire Pro, I would have told you during the first match, during the tag match, and during the outro of the show. You would have known what was going on. In any case... Solo demands Tulsa to acknowledge him, and he gets booed because, you know, he's the bad guy. Solo reminds Roman that he is the tribal chief. Solo tells him that if he calls himself the tribal chief and he wants the tribal laid back, then he has to come and get it. So Roman's music hit. The crowd acknowledges him. I mean, they got the one finger up. They got the signs. They are all about Roman. I'm like, man, Roman's got to be a baby face for a while over this. But here's about where they're about to mess everything up. Because this, this is not good. Not unless they got some get back. Because this is bad. This is bad. I don't like it. Others might see some genius that makes it go further. But I don't. I don't. So look. This is what happened. Solo sends G.O.D. after him. Roman, that is. And Roman dispatches with them like it ain't nothing. Slam steps on their hips. The fans are chanting over the counter. They are. Well, okay, they're, they're, they're chanting OTC. Okay, original tribal chief. I, I, yeah, but still. Over the the first OTC was over the counter that we never heard of. So they wanted somebody. And you, you brought that up, Cedra, over the counter. Yeah. He and Solo fight, he being Roman, with Solo losing out and being pulled from the ring to evade the spear. Roman walks over to the tribal chief's lay, and I couldn't hear what Michael Jr. said. Uh, he called it something, but he got attacked by G.O.D. Roman turns things around, beating down G.O.D. if it was nothing. Solo Sokoa simply stands outside the ring offering no help, not showing he's a leader, and watches his men get dismantled and humiliated. The fans chant OTC and Roman leaves the ring, runs the corners and spears Tamatanga through the corner barricade. Huge pop. Roman gets a chair and just waylays Tonga lower. And I mean, he whooped his back with that chair. He, man, he Steve Austin his ass with that thing. And then Solo talks himself up. When Solo talks himself up as chief, 
Roman jabs the chair in the lower repeater. He just, just, just stabbing him in the back, in the shoulder and shit with the chair. And I'm like, you are not helping the situation, Solo. You look real bad. It's almost like, dang, man, you just busted up my man's back. You know what? I bet you won't do it again. <laughs> I bet you won't do it again. And then he's doing it again. And Kong has got to be saying, why? Why, Tribal Chief? Why? And, and, and so Solo talks his trash, but from afar, while Roman looks strong, center stage. And that's where it ends for us, anyway. And I wrote, this is a poor job. As a matter of fact, before I get into my thing that I had to write after this, Cedric, you go ahead, because you say Jacob ain't injured. Uh, Corey Graves, Michael Cole Jr. says that he is. The way it looked to me, it is. Jim Cornette says that the injury, he don't think it's injury. He thinks it's the only way at SummerSlam to even things out is for Jacob to be hurt, to take himself out, because with him taken out, then the match can go on as needed. But if he wasn't hurt, then he would be the severe unequalizer, all right? And he, you'd have to have a new champion because it wouldn't have made sense. Mm-hmm. You know, and and that makes sense. Not unless Roman beat down Jacob, and then that would make Jacob look weak. When you're trying to make him look strong, when people get hurt in wrestling, they tell you what the injury is. What was that dude? I think he's passed away. Draws. When he got hurt, there was no ambiguity. You yeah. knew what happened to him. Yeah, they 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 let you know pretty much later that day. When Shibata got hurt, some sort of head injury, he passed out, he was dehydrated, had emergency brain surgery. As soon as the information got out, that's what got plastered all over the sheets. When Benoit died, it was immediate. Mm -hmm. they, they let you know. When Dante broke his leg, and he broke his leg, the ankle, you know, the foot's flopping the other way. The very next show after that pay-per-view, Dante suffered a yada, yada, yada. He's going to be out for a while. You know, get well soon. Yep. Okay. Like he'll be back in a year or so, something like that. So it's been days since SummerSlam. And if you go and look at information that's been put online a day ago, yeah, he's injured. The, the injury is unknown. We're not sure how long he's going to be gone. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like, it, look, it, it happened. He hit his thigh. He held his shin. I'm like, I'll be all right. It might be a work. I don't know. But it's going to be what it is. He's know? not hurt. He's, so, he's, yeah. he's just not there because it makes sense for him to not be there because he's the most unstoppable one in the company. And if he were there, like you said, and like Cornette said, the belt would have had to change hands. Yep. And if he was there, Roman wouldn't be able to do what he did. Nope. Because it would look real bad. So this is what I wrote. This is a poor job on WWE's part. Now, I'm writing this as a fan. I don't know what goes on in the back. I don't know what they got planned down the line. All right? But I'm just letting you know, as a fan, with how I think some logic should be, I'm letting you know how, why I'm not liking this. This whole what happened with Roman and humiliating them. Because right now, the bloodline, they might as well be opening card and never heard of they are they he they are the new pretty deadly that's what they look like now bro, this is a poor job on wwe's part roman can look good even if he can't beat the stacked odds triple h'ing the tag champs makes not only a true established tag team look like scrubs but with this level of beatdown, they should not be healthy enough to attend a few shows let alone defend the tag titles Solo Sokoa should have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Roman with neither backing down, but Roman eventually getting enough of the upper hand that G.O.D. shuts him down. Make G.O.D. look strong as Roman escapes the ring, not looking much worse for wear, and then he can cut a short promo or just stare at him. This way, Solo looks like he's come up, G.O.D. looks competent, and Roman looks strong, but not overpowered to beat up the whole damn faction in a short amount of time. It would indicate the numbers are in Solo's favor, and Roman would need a strategy such as getting his wise man back. 
and some other things. But right now, the bloodline, I, if I was Roman, I'd be like, so, so, I mean, you got the thing. I'll just make a new one because I'm him and you ain't good enough. Cody said you're not ready. He proved you're not ready. You couldn't get it done alone. When I had that much help, I always won. When you had that much help, and look where you are. Well, think about it. Doesn't it make sense for him to not get in there and help G.O.D.? As I have said before, all of his henchmen are far better than he. And if they can't stop Roman, what the hell is he going to do? Throw his, throw his shirt at him? Throw them ugly ass blacks at him? That's how it looks... Everybody, that's what a fan that has no clue of what is going on in pro wrestling, no, no backstage stuff, that's what they think. That's what they think, and that's why it's so bad. Because, it, well, well, he just whooped your tag champions. What you going to do? Nothing. Nothing. And that's what he did. Nothing. nothing. He did nothing. He looked terrible. He, he could have grabbed weak. a weapon and went in there. Something. Really? There's so many things he could have done. I don't know when Roman was sitting there and, and got to he, he got the spear. He was distracted. You could have got in and beat on him. Mm -hmm. Beat on him. Threw him to, from the ring. Help your peoples up. Run in there and, you know, do a, a, one of them spikes somewhere painful. Really? I thought this was just terrible. Maybe they got something down the line where Solo will get his, 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 his lick back or something. I don't know. But... This right here just reminded me of Attitude Era Triple H beating down the tag champs by himself, barely having a tag or do anything. It was a handicap match. Yeah, it was a it was like a couple of handicap matches. Triple H versus tag champions. And he just whooped them. He took a little bump, but then he just whooped them. Just no. I thought this was I thought this was bad. I don't know how they're gonna do this because they turned down solo. I'm like, y'all trying to get rid of him. That's what that is. That, that's got to be it. I mean, I guess I need a placeholder to keep the beef going until the over-the-counter return. Must be. And so eventually he'll bow down. He'll be the enforcer. And he'll be like, I could have been somebody. I could, could have been, been a, a contender. contender. No, you couldn't. Instead of a nobody, which is what I am. A nobody. And then Mick should walk in. What, you got no guts no more? <laughs> He'd be like, nah, I ain't got no guts no more. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you know, think about retiring, kid? No. Why? Think you know, about it. Yep, think about <laughs> it. Because that's, that's the way it is. So, look, before this hit the 23-minute mark, I'm going to get up out of here. So, this has been Cedric Cedric for CRS and Commentary on Friday Night Smackdown-ish. And with that, I want y'all to be cool, be chill, be safe. And we will see you next time.